I remember back to when I first started my own luxury bag collection. It was such an exciting process and it's so easy to get caught up in the hype and go with the most popular bag everyone thinks is timeless or will retain its value. But if you don't take the time to really think about what you want and truly what you need, you're going to end up with a collection of bags that you might not use as much as you want to and you're constantly chasing the high of buying a new bag to add to your collection, which is ultimately a waste of money. Over the years, I've developed a smaller curated collection of handbags. So whether you're starting your bag collection from scratch or you're looking to streamline the bag collection that you already own, I want to share with you the best tips that I've learned to help you develop a collection of handbags that you truly will love for a lifetime. I realize that no one really talks about this, but it's important before you jump into starting a handbag collection is to define the purpose of why you even have the handbag collection in the first place. I found that once I've defined my purpose and shopping criteria, it really makes shopping for a luxury bag easier. The types of things you should think about is how long do you actually plan on keeping these handbags? Are you looking to develop a more limited edition collection that more act as art pieces or do you want a practical collection of bags that you can use every day? Are you looking to resell these bags for a future profit? So for me, after a lot of self-reflection, the majority of my bag collection is meant to be functional and something I can use on a daily basis and is very versatile and can be styled in many different ways. I also know that I want them to have a timeless modern look that really reflect my personal style. Finding your style identity is a complex and time-consuming process, but it really pays off at the end of the day because then you know what you truly want and you don't want to be spending money on expensive bags only to lose money when you resell them in the future, realizing that's not what you truly want. You are still trying to figure out your style identity. Don't you worry, you're not alone. It took me so long to figure out my own as well. I'd love to make more videos about in the future, but for now, the best place to start is in your own closet and see what are the items that you actually wear the most and gravitate towards, and then try drawing lines between the similarities of them. Spend some time in a shopping mall looking for both bags and clothing just to get a sense of what you enjoy and what you don't enjoy just by trying on styles that you never would have tried before. For example, do you like slouchy bags versus structured bags? Do you like bags with logos versus patterns? What kind of bag materials do you like? Do you like patent, velvet, lambskin, shiny calfskin? There's so many different types available. And you can also try perusing your friend's closet and see what you gravitate towards. What also helps is understanding who are your style icons and what do they have in common. Ultimately, I find that your style is a combination of your aesthetic and your values and how you want to project yourself to the outside world. I highly recommend you take your time figuring this out before you get started on your luxury bag collection. What also goes hand in hand with style identity is determining a color scheme for your bag collection and considering how that matches your wardrobe. For me, I know I'm more of a black and white neutrals person, so I know that with my bags, I wanted to stay in that color range. While if I wanted to change up the colors, I would do that in my fashion and clothes because they are less expensive. Then you need to decide what's the magic number of bags that constitute a perfect bag collection for you. The first thing you want to start with is understand how many times a year you're even going to be using bags. Especially now that people are working more remotely and using hybrid work styles, you may actually be using your bags way less than you were many years ago. Try this analysis to determine your most used bag types. List all the times that you would be using your bags in a year. and then list which types of bags you use for each of these occasions. Then break down the number of days you would be using your bags at each of these events. Then break it down even further into each type of bag. As you're doing this, you'll really start to realize what types of bags you really use the most. I would love to hear from you in the comment section down below. What are your favorite tips to building a lasting bag collection? Let me know if you want to see similar videos like this in the future by clicking the like button. In this scenario, a large or tote bag would be used the most often. Second is a smaller mini bag and then a medium bag would be used the least. Use this analysis to really break down what types of bags you think should be as part of your core collection.
realistically decide the criteria that you would want for each type of bag to make sure that you have enough uses to justify the price of getting a quality bag. I would say in most cases, people at a minimum would need one large tote bag, one medium tote bag, and one small or mini bag. And some people may also like having a backpack. You can use this four bag minimum as a guideline, but also make sure you consider your lifestyle and how it differs from mine. In my perfect core bag collection is about eight to 10 bags. That's essentially just double the very bare minimum. And the main reason for that is I do want a bit more variety in my bags, but also if you have two bags instead of just one bag of the same size, you won't be putting all that pressure from your daily use onto that one bag and it's split between two, so it will last so much longer in your collection. A very important concept when it comes to luxury handbags, but also any luxury or expensive purchases that you make is cost per wear. And cost per wear essentially is the cost of the product that you're buying divided by the number of times that you use it or wear it. So for example, if you purchased a Chanel flat bag for $5,000, but only wore it twice a year, that would be a pretty high cost per wear, which means it's not really quite worth your money and you're not getting as much use out of it as you might want to. In contrast, let's say you have a $2,500 Givenchy Antigona, but you use a hundred times a year, that would be a much lower cost per wear, which means you're getting the value you want out of your bags. The ultimate question is how do you find bags that decrease your overall cost per wear? I always consider how versatile bags are before I start investing in them. And especially if you're looking to curate a smaller collection of bags, I always go for bags that are more versatile in terms of the way that you can style them and the types of events you can take them to. So for example, my Chanel walk is really versatile. I've actually found 15 different ways that you can wear it. You can wear it as a belt bag for more of a street style look, but you can also wear it to an elegant evening event. Also can double as an errand bag so the more events that you can wear your bags to the better because you're able to get more use out of it for the price when you're thinking about how you can use your bags in your lifestyle don't just think about now but think about your future self as well so for example you might want to buy a tote bag for work but what about in the future when you want to use it as a diaper bag when you become a mother so in terms of practicality you really got to think about how you operate daily as a person if you're more careless then you want to go for more durable materials like coated canvas or a grained leather still look quite new even though you've used it quite a bit on the other hand if you're able to take more care of your items and you're a bit more of a careful person then you can go for other types of bags like lambskin or patent leather or metallic leather now when I first started buying bags I know that I was a little bit of a klutz and I wasn't that careful I didn't have the best handbag care habits. So my first bag was a grained leather, which means scratches are just not that easily seen and it was in a black color. But as I developed really good habits over time, I was able to invest in more delicate leathers like this shiny Givenchy Antigona. And I actually do a completely separate video on what those daily habits I've developed are to protect your bags and make them look almost mint condition. If you want to buy a luxury bag, it should address every single lifestyle need that you have, which includes it being comfortable to hold and wear. So for example, in general, I prefer thicker leather straps for my heavier and bigger bags. But for my smaller bags, I don't mind if they're chain straps because it won't hurt my shoulders. Patience is key if you're looking to build a perfect bag collection. From my experience, that want will not go away and eventually you'll still go back to buy the bag that you eventually want. The one thing that I did is I didn't compromise any of the criteria that I had for my bags. For example, the Chanel Walk is one of the most expensive mini bags in my collection, but it's something that I've wanted because it hit every single criteria I had and it was a laundry list. I wanted it to be a small bag that could be configured in many different ways. I had to have a pouch in the back so I could easily access my cards. Grained leather, the kind resale value lined with gold, trusty enough for an evening bag, but good enough to wear casually as an everyday bag. And I could have compromised and bought a cheaper bag that still fulfilled some of those criteria, but because I didn't, I still absolutely love that bag to this day. It's been about six, seven years now, and I still see myself continue to loving it. And if I had bought any other bag, I likely would have resold it and rebought this one. Buy bags that fit your budget first before you start investing in more expensive luxury bags. So the very first bag that you add to your bag collection that will last for a lifetime may not actually be a very expensive bag. Throughout college and throughout work, all the way until I hit my very first six figures, I used this L'Enchamp Le Pliage bag, which is 
it was probably less than 100 many years ago, but I think it's now in the, in the 190 range. But you can get this on significant discount. And so if you look at cost per wear, this is so low, like less than a dollar, probably in the cents even. It's been incredibly durable and a beautiful classic bag that I will continue to use for a lifetime because I bought it right the first time. Let's say now you're at a financially stable place in your life. How do you determine what to spend on a bag? I actually think you should find the perfect bag that fits all of your criteria first. And then if that's ultimately the one that you want, then you work towards saving for that one. Don't fall for the hype on new and popular bags. I made this mistake once. I fell for the Dior saddlebag when it was popular a couple years ago and it was all over Instagram. It was the vintage mini Dior saddlebag and I bought it I think for about three, four hundred dollars. I thought, hey, it's not that much money. Let me just try out the style. It looks so cool in pictures. I only ended up using it five times. It was not worth the time and energy it took to curate it and then having to resell it. Thank goodness I was able to sell for a profit. Make sure to do your own research and don't rely on necessarily what other people think and what works for them. You need to know what works for yourself and your lifestyle. And the more you listen to yourself, you're more confident when purchasing an item and it's more likely to stay timeless in your closet. Reselling your bags is a huge hassle and also you'll lose money on commission. For example, you bought your Chanel bag for $5,000. Right now, it looks like lots of people are selling it for about three, four thousand dollars. Well, don't forget, you also need to pay maybe 15, 20 percent, 30 percent commission to the site that you're using to sell your bags. You can typically recoup quite a bit of your cost when you purchase classic and timeless pieces. And the way that you can identify that is seeing how long the design's been out for. Are they reselling for a high price point? And is the resale value increasing year over year? And should be made by a legacy luxury fashion house. Over time, I've developed a set of really good habits for caring for my luxury bed that are really quite easy to adopt and implement, especially once it becomes a habit and ingrained within you. So I've shared that with you in this next video, how I like to handle a bag like this that is prone to scratches and still keep it in mint condition over the six, seven years that I've had it.